to our transition to the first go. Fuck yeah. I really expected to come back and everyone be talking shit. Bat. We went no, patiently. I'm, I'm doing the thing where I have to remember to post shit places. Ah, yes. That good shit. I wait until you're here so I could talk shit to you directly. I mean, I respect, I, I, I respect that. If you're going to talk shit, at least, you know, respect me enough to do it to my face. I respect that. Ugh. But yes, uh, welcome to session four, everyone. Where we ponder the orb as well as our life choices. <laughs> A quick recap for everyone, including Dell, who was not here. Um, you guys did a little bit of shopping, a little bit of B&E, because, you know, who doesn't need a bit, little bit of that every now and again? Uh, you guys found a lovely orb, which I believe Elric is carrying. Yep. Okay. Um, and I had to be distracted because the first guy I see when looking over is Woo, the Nad Knockers Assemble. That was mine, wasn't it? Yep, it was yours. I thought so. <laughs> the fact that you knew it was yours says a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, Twitch changed their layout on my computer. Uh, also, yeah. um, while shopping, EFA was able to acquire quite the spread of treats. Best snacks ever. Some of it was left for Dell, others were moved not so co covertly back to DFA's room. And thankfully, everyone got a long rest. Hopefully, everyone is well rested and ready to go about their lives. Probably not. Yeah. But we'll, you know, we'll deal with it. <laughs> um, I think the last thing we saw was you guys leaving the villa and heading back into town to go show Del the orb. Yes, that's where we. So, I had to leave a little bit early. So oh no, you you didn't miss anything. Like right after you left, we okay. pretty much we we wrapped up with the orb and skedaddled. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you you didn't miss like anything fancy. Okay. Great. Yep. Um. Also, I think I mentioned it to you, Icarus. It, uh, Dell was given 10 coins via the group. So if you didn't add that already. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, also, I didn't tell you, but, you know, we can do what you want. Everyone also decided to kick in, I think, what, five gil to Mogzio as a... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Please a, protect us. Yeah, put, protect us with your fucking god powers fund. I just throw cards. I don't... <laughs> I mean... I guess it's a tip. Yeah, call it that. They call it a tip, sure. It's like a reward. <laughs> Mog yeah. yeah. Mogzia doesn't understand this custom. <laughs> Either way, uh, you were you were given Gil. Uh, what you do with it is up to you. If you wish to kick some over to Mogzia or not. Um, and yeah, I think we'll just start there with everyone heading back into to the uh, town to go give Dell a proper. Hey, we found an orb. Del was also given snacks. Del was mm. given snacks, yes. Del was also Del. given snacks. That's what DFA is going to lead with, is we didn't die, don't touch the ones in my room. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, okay. So I'm going to assume that you guys just go straight to the tavern and no, not take any detours. Correct. We, I think we already did our detours. So, yeah. Well, no, I'm just making sure like yeah. no one, no one wanted to stop anywhere on the way back to get Dell. No, because all of our stuff was delivered back to us, right, from the, yep. the shops. Yeah. Okay. Then no, I don't think we need to do anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. I um, think so, we left off in the tavern, didn't we? No, you guys were you guys were heading back to it. That was my uh, point. You you were on the way back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you guys will arrive at the tavern. Um, since it is night shift now, um, Penny is no longer on shift. Um, Jonas is. Your favorite little frog boy. Mm -hmm. And when you guys arrive, um, just out of curiosity, is Dell still in their room? Or have they located down to the main tavern to, you know, socialize? I, I think he's finally emerged from from the room and is just like I he, I don't think he's he's gonna necessarily want to 
talk about some of the stuff earlier today we'll see but he's like i can be around people now that's what people do yeah poor thing all right so <laughs> when you guys arrive dell is in the main tavern sitting at a table um are you looking for your party or are you just like you know staring into the abyss that is your pint glass i, I think he he he's he's doing this um th this fairly uh regular thing where where because like he'll he doesn't actually from what I remember I don't believe he actually needs to eat or drink he doesn't need to he doesn't need to I think he can a little bit for like appearances <laughs> that's fair it's not like an AI situation where he like breaks <laughs> exactly like it's not going to short circuit him but like there's you know this wasn't a, a primary function so it's it's a very small container <laughs> can we feed Dell motor oil <laughs> and gasoline is that a thing um at this <laughs> point in the final fantasy world i would say gasoline oil is a thing because that's how you do a uh, burn um there's oil not gasoline, though. Gen droids probably have, like, a, a custom of some kind of, like, consumable thing they can have that if they're fairly, like, common. I would say, like, yeah, like, oil might be an option. Because I know uh, handkerchiefs are used to remove the oil condition, which makes you more susceptible to fire. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it I, looks like things, uh, Shin droids can still use oils and potions, uh, but not healing ones. Yeah, there you so, go. So, yeah. I love him so much. <laughs> Have a little oil as a treat. Yeah. <laughs> a treat. Get a um, little maybe D forty. So honestly, he's <laughs> sorry. He's probably sitting there with like a small glass of like something fizzy. I don't know if it's just like seltzer water or something, but something fizzy because he likes the way that the bubbles feel. Um, and. Probably no food, just just like a small fizzy something. And he does a thing where he'll like stare into the glass for a little while and then like remember, oh yes, where are they? And then he'll like look around very measured like. And if he doesn't see them, then it's just back to the glass. <laughs> All right. Um you do see them. They not the group is not exactly like stealthy upon their re-entry. How they re-enter the tavern though is up to them. <laughs> well, I guess. Well, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. Elric's gonna be able to see Dell, right? Yeah, Dell's not yeah, yeah. Dell's not. So, since we got this orb, I'm gonna just walk over. Dell. Dell has gotten a table big enough for everybody. Um, I'm gonna sit. Yeah. I'm gonna sit with Dell. And Elric's gonna first. Elric's gonna ask if they're okay. I believe so i that was a first for me and very strange i bet yeah it definitely seemed like it was but uh you definitely saved all our butts so thank you for that and all of you not not just that part well we came across this and I'm gonna pull out the the orb. Everyone roll upon. Am I orb? able okay. to smack it back into the bag before he pulls it out? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, He's extra cautious. Okay. I, I mean, I mean, wouldn't you be? I, I would say. Apparently roll... not. Nope. Yeah. No. Yeah. Apparently, you're not. So. I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a very yellow player. You are. I'm noticing that. Um. Normally I would be, but I'm like, nah, fuck it. So no, you just you just want to do like a basic like slap his hand back so it doesn't pu pull the orb out. Yes. Yeah, like we got this, and like before he even like starts yeah. to reach for it, or like as he puts his hand in the bag, I just put my paw on top of it, just be like, um, and just shake my head. <laughs> just roll a d twenty, see if you can actually do it, like against his reflex. Yeah, is just, it my reflex? Yeah, you're, you, his? yeah, you're, just do a reflex. Uh, Check for both. Mean thing for both of you. Whoever has the highest will get it. Seventeen. So just roll a twenty. Um, you, you roll and use your reflex as the thing modifier. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I got a six. Yeah, he definitely slapped my hand. <laughs> El- Elric reaches into the bag, is about to pull up the orb, and all things just hear loud <sniffs> against your like the back of your hand, and you look down. There's like Mogs, you know, glaring at you. Ah, oh, what the hell? Maybe in the room would be better. <laughs> yeah, take your balls out in the room, not in public. Um. <laughs> oh, the room! And she goes sprinting full force up to her room. It, it's it's still there. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get up. He's gonna rub his hands like ah, and head towards the room. For the record, I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> Del will look around, not know if he should take his glass, and then see that other glasses have been left. So he will leave it here and then follow. Okay. So are you guys well, all going to DFA's room, or are you going to a different room? Because DFA uh, just bolted without anyone like... I, I, yeah, I guess DFA's room. Okay. <laughs> we all gotta pick all rooms, so might as well be here. Okay, so you all... If you come into her room, you're going to see her cataloging everything to make sure nothing was taken. <laughs> Every <laughs> single bakery box is being opened, and she's counting as if she absolutely, for sure, knows each and every item in there. Right. those who fo- those who followed you find dfa very enthusiastically and professionally so cataloging all the treats that track oh anyway because i need to ask della what is your reaction to the room full of confectionery boxes do you do you run a bakery normally? I thought all these. These are mine. And she doesn't even look up from what she's doing. She's still just flipping through. And then she kind of like shoves the box to the side and goes, you guys can have these. And then she just goes <laughs> back to looking through them. Thanks, DFA. Dell is just astounded because he's trying to think about like active, like one single person actively eating all of this food, just in general, because he eats like three bites at a time and that's literally all he can handle. And he's just sort of like, this would take me so long. (laughs) How, how does one person eat these before they go back? It is in like, it is incomprehensible to him. I'm Google at that. Yeah, exactly. It's just how you're so small. <laughs> DFA's part black hole. She is a garbage disposal. That makes sense too. On her mother's side, of course. <laughs> of course. I was about to say, is it a maternal or a paternal trait? <laughs> well, that's canon now. <laughs> uh, are we? Are we all in the room? <laughs> Yes, you all have climbed the stairs after DFA and uh, reached the uh, the bakery storage chamber. <laughs> I'm uh, Elric's gonna look, look at Muggsy and be like, "Like now? Can, can I ask now?" Is the door closed? <laughs> is it closed? <laughs> this is I'll an RP thing. This is on you guys. <laughs> right, I'll right. shut the door very loudly and say, "It is now." <laughs> it is now. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very carefully now to, to not get his hand smacked again because he doesn't know. <laughs> Mogsio raises his hand again just to, <laughs> just, just to threaten. It's going to take the freaking orb out and ask Del if uh, you can make any sense of this. Ooh, can I? First of all, just so you know what you're dealing with, um, you are looking at as they described it last week, the orb from Treasure Planet in terms of, like, size and shape. Yes! Um, there are... That in, in... sounded interesting. <laughs> Sorry. What you don't know is I triggered a core memory for Dell. Look. I mean, Icarus. Look, that movie is so good. Anyway. So. Um, but there... like the sense mode of the excitement. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, no, um, <laughs> there are lines running ac- across it, indented circles, sporadically in the lines... It looks like it could be something, but you don't know right away. But if you wish to um, see... I do. <laughs> <laughs> see you with your seeing eyes. 
I was brown. Uh, what did you see? Anyway, <laughs> did you see all? I would say. What knowledges do you have? Uh, my thing said that I get all of them, um, and then I I put some into. Uh, let's see, I have Arcana, History, and Technology. Which do you want to roll for? I think Arcana first. Okay, roll for an Arcana. Yeah. I forgot that you have all the knowledge. That would be a dirty 20. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I, I rolled good. Oh, no, it's more of a shit like I didn't expect you to roll 20. <laughs> <laughs> Elric hands you the orb, and at first you look at it like it's in, then you see it close and you go, Wait, it's shiny, sparkles and shine. I must have it. Um, <laughs> and you start like changing it in your hands, shifting it, look, looking at, uh, studying the lines, the indents, feeling the heft of it. There isn't a magical feeling to it, or there isn't any like memory of anything like this appearing in your memory banks, mm -hmm. magically speaking. But you know. <laughs> someone would use it thinking it would be magical because, again, it looks like something that someone that uses magic would seek out or store power in. It could be mistaken for something Arcana-related. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So it, it has the appearance of something magical, but yes. is itself not actually magic, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, he'll... He's probably, he's very much like, it's almost like he saw this and his eyes, like, he, it's almost like you can see like little lines of code, like running in the background. It's just, ooh, what's this? <laughs> I'm picturing a boo staring at the giant gem in the Cave of Wonders. A little bit, yeah. yes. Just, just make the eyes like a little bit angular because, like, I don't know. There's got to be some way to denote like shindroid, but still. Um, okay. Well, if it's not actively um, magical, can I then try technology? You can. Okay. Cool. Let's see what the dice say. Um, okay, that one's a seventeen. Um, as you're looking, you don't know what you did. But somehow, as you're doing it, um, parts of it start to rotate one way, parts rotate the other. Almost like a Rubik's Cube, if you're fidgeting with it enough. Okay. But after you do it once, it locks back up and you have no idea what you did. Okay. So he's... He's going to sort of look up from where it's, it's locked up, and... Um... He's almost got like a, it's almost like that, that coming out of hyperfixation mode face of just like, like a little bit unfocused and just, well, it's not magic. It looks magic, but it's not magic. It's something tech, but I don't know what yet. Um, can I keep trying or, or do you want it back? No, no, you can hold on to it. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's that's what you say to people. Thank you. You're very welcome. Stare. <laughs> this is the episode where Adele leaves the party for the, the orb. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of their um their go their golem arc. Exactly. Just where's, where's Del? He's in the corner playing with the orb again. <laughs> Still, he never left. Did we tell Del that? Somebody was gonna pay us to get that. You have not. Nah, not yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, we should have no idea. Bring that up, okay. right? Yeah. Hey, Dell. Yes. So, I'm glad you're enjoying the orb and all that. Somebody actually paid us to retrieve that for them. Paid is gonna pay. Did they give us money yet? Not yet. No. Oh. 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 is willing to pay us for retrieving that orb. But they did say they would take about a week before they left the island. So 
as of right now, for all they know, you haven't done anything yet. I mean, you got time, but just saying. Okay. Um, I... It, it it's in. Did they say why they want it? Did did they? Is it a toy? He didn't say. I'll be honest. I kind of stopped listening. <laughs> they didn't. They neglected to mention. He just said that it was something of interest to somebody who would pay a lot of money for it and was willing to pay us two thousand gil as a party to retrieve it for him. Some <laughs> fellow named Gail. Oh, that's so much. Um, but well, if it's worth more to you, I'm willing not to tell him that I'm willing to tell him that we couldn't find it. Well, seem to like it. It's 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 fascinating, but but it I. Mm, but you said you would do a thing, and 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 we we should we should do the thing. We can always give it to him in the morning. I mean, we can give it to him like in a week. We have if a you want to give it to him. Yeah, if you want to play with it longer and maybe figure out something else to do with it, we got time. Okay. <laughs> he looks like legitimately like. He's he's that weird combination of, of like baffled but pleased, but also is like and doesn't seem to realize this, but he's also like kind of holding the orb in a way that it's almost like he expects it to be taken, so he's trying to like have contact with it while he can, if that makes sense. No. <laughs> For the record, I'm finding all this very oh, awesome. <laughs> Hyacinth is gonna pull out their bag and start rooting around a little bit and pull out one of the sharpened knives that they or that they got from uh, the blacksmith okay. and holds it blunt side to Dell. I got you something and this is something that you can keep. You you did? I did. You did an amazing job. And I thought that you deserve something for it. Um, this is what we always did in the woods. Once you help somebody, then you gift them something. So I'm gifting you this. He looks utterly stunned. I'm not going to lie. Like, it legitimately. Is a, <laughs> it is a silverware knife. It is a metal silverware knife that has been sharpened. That's so cute. <laughs> and I believe JM said that it would be used as an improvised weapon. Yep. Oh, well, yeah. He he takes it very, very... Like, he, he actually, like, takes a moment to uh, to put the orb, like, I think, in, like, like down. Like, very gently, like, at his feet. Um, and he takes it very, very carefully. Almost like he's picking up, like... You know how people pick up things like like a ceremonial blade where it's like two hands underneath and like you lift gently? Yeah. I'm not. Oh. <laughs> oh. Poor child. Anyway, but no, like legit just like picks it up and like looks it and then like does like a very firm nod. And I think um, probably tucks it very gently into uh, probably into his bag. Um, I don't have like an actual, I don't think he has an actual hilt for it yet, but I can always pick up one. Um, and, and he like, like very, very gently, like kind of rests his hand, like on top of yours and says, thank you. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. If you want, I can teach you how to use it. Okay. I don't know how to do much that's have, um, with. You stick them with the pointy end, and that's all I know, but I don't have any of those besides that. You can also open things with it. It doesn't always have to be people or creatures. Like a box? Like a box. Like a box. Or a letter. 
<laughs> he kind of tilts his head and then just sort of right yes people get letters and mail he doesn't sound very sure of this fact they do get those things yes he nods as though like they like yes yes good i knew this definitely mm -hmm. and if you really want to have some fun you knock him out with the blunt end and they don't get stabbed with it no they usually get bruised and usually take a little nap a quick one oh I did not know that. Oh man! <laughs> I'm sorry. Dell is such a is such a wholesome child that has no clue what's going really? on. Really, <laughs> like he's not. He is not allowed. Core is just sitting here like, oh god, he's so cute. <laughs> oh no! How, how is this adult child just what? <laughs> how is this is protect? So I was this adult Someone child made it so far? Like, yes. I'm just imagining somebody watching this and being like, Hyacinth, what are you giving Dell? A knife! No! No! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> While all this is happening, I need to know, is DFA done cataloging their snacks, or are they still, like, deep in inventory mode? Coincidentally, about that time, DFA goes, What's missing? As it's in her mouth. So it's just like crumbs flying everywhere. <laughs> she starts looking at everybody like she's out for blood in this moment. <laughs> Who took <laughs> it? Our scanners. DFA, DFA. Reach for your face. She puts a hand on either side of her cheeks. And it's just like her helmet. <laughs> She's touching, like, the sides of her helmet. Oh my god. No. DFA. The front of your face. She just stripes smacks herself in the forehead. <laughs> your mouth, DFA. Your mouth. Oh god, your mouth, thank man. Thank you so much. <laughs> she swallows and she's like, that? <laughs> she's like, and she turns to Mogzio and she goes, is this, is this a game that we never learned? Yes, you're winning. <laughs> oh. And she seems completely satisfied with that answer and just drops the entire thing. She goes back <laughs> to her own little world. It's a, it's right. a skill. That was... I just happen to be trained in it. Incredible. <laughs> trained in DFA. Uh, <laughs> it's a very specific sub-language, yes. Apparently he knows how to speak DFA. <laughs> If you don't know how to speak, you need to take a dis disadvantage with all diplomacy checks. <laughs> I already have that, basically. <laughs> oh, God. That, that little teary eye from that one. <laughs> <laughs> Reach for your face. Oh, God. So, <laughs> we're not getting the gold, then. I mean, I mean we could, me or we could also not. I was gonna well, give Magic Boy more time to look at it. Yeah, I, I'm okay with revisiting the idea, but I'm putting my head in for. Uh, I don't care if the guy has it. Um, I think gold would be nice to have. We're not exactly, or at least I'm not exactly rich. So, I think I'm gonna ask around about this Gale person. Yeah, we, we definitely have time to get more information and all that stuff. Plenty of time to decide. I'm just saying, let's keep it in mind. Let's not just make a decision right off the bat. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm, I was more so thinking that if it's not something magical, but if it's something interesting, maybe someone else would pay us more for it. Also a possibility. That is possible. We'll, we'll see what happens. 
Because it sounds like he's just going to go and resell it. Or he's going to use it for something. So if we can get more money out of him, why not? Yeah, the unfortunate um, fact is that we don't know what we're dealing with. So it could be something inconsequential that someone just wants. Or it could, could be something powerful. In my like you could unlock something. If someone wants to pay you a lot of money for something, it's usually because somebody else wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Two thousand gold is not a ton of money, but it's it's a good amount. Two thousand gold is a couple nights of things that people usually don't want to do. So I think I want to ask around and see if he's approached anybody else in town to try and go to that manor. Because I like it here. I would not, I don't want to have to run away quite yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is a nice place. Sounds like a good place to start. So I guess the party's going to go down and ask around. Uh, yeah, sounds like it. Sounds good you to said- me. Jonas was working, so does that mean that Fulcus is there too? Yes. Fulcus is at the door doing bouncer things. Alright. Hyacinth is gonna bunny hop their way over to Fulcus. Um, before you do that, I need everyone but Dell to deafen so I can tell them something that... Okay, give me a second to figure this out. Yep. I am... I am... I am technology used um, and a little scared. It's next to um, your mute button. Yeah, it's the headphone. It's the head. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, none. Wait, not one no, of them. Wait, no, hold on. I'm trying. I will just take my headphones out and then you. Yeah, I'll put it in chat Somebody when we're done. Pass. Cool. Okay. Okay, go. All right. Still. Yes. This is where you die. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's been a good, it's been a good run. It's fine. Yeah, you did. Um, you're still fidgeting with the orb, obviously. Oh, yes, definitely. You try to recreate what made it move the first time, because you're like, okay, if it worked once, I can maybe get to work again. Yeah. Instead, though, you start to hear something. Oh. It's, a, it's uh, at first you hear, because you're an android, you hear a little bit better than normal people, um, like the whirling of gears and uh, like the mechanical sounds of something like activating. Yeah, like, like small frequencies that normal, that a standard person wouldn't pick up kind yeah. of thing. Um, almost like clockwork noises. Like when you wind up a toy, you hear the like little gears moving yeah. and everything. You, you hear that. Okay. And then in a very whispered sound. <sighs> You hear Dell remember to not trust Ren. Ren? R E N, yes. It's again very whispered, far from Uh like far away, almost as if someone's whispering across a room. Interesting. Does that name mean anything to me? Um, roll a history. Alrighty. Where is the, do I have that? Uh, it's a knowledge. Thank you. Knowledge, history. I, yes, I do. Okay. Okay, that's 19 plus, where the hell are you? There are so many lines. Sorry. 19 plus 5. Okay. Uh, 24. The name doesn't ring too much of a bell. You remember long before when you were being made flashes of the person who made you. And you over, (laughs) and you would, you would always overhear them saying, Renfri this, Renfri that. Damn it, Renfri is demanding. They want the, they want the impossible. You never knew who Renfrey was, though. You just knew that your creator always spoke ill of them. Oh, interesting. Okay. And it was always in a 
stressed out way. It was never in a wholesome, like, okay, I, can, I know this person's going to be good. It was always antagonistic. Okay. Always antagonistic, always upset when they mentioned, like, Renfrey needs this, Renfrey needs that. Yeah. I never actually spoke to Renfrey, yeah. but that name is just, it, it's, it's floating around in my, like, beginning memory. memory. Yes. And the orb said, do not trust Renfrey, correct? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Writing it down. Um, also, the last thing you hear whispered is, the, it's just one word. Shin Ryu. Shin Ryu? Shin Ryu. S-H-I-N-R-Y. Why you? Okay. And right as the, the word is whispered, you hear what could only be described as a roar, then the, the whispering ends. Okay. Funky fresh. <laughs> and I'm gonna, Can I look around just before we bring everyone back? Does anyone else seem to have heard any of what I did, or does it or was it enough that it was only me that heard it? It's clear to you that only you hear it. Interesting. Okay. Ooh. And that second word doesn't mean anything to me, right? Not a bit. It's just okay. a word. It's just, that sure is a word. Okay. Okay. All right, good stuff. Uh <gasps> Just, oh. So did, so in time to hear Dell's death rattle. Yeah, no, that was actually that that was it. Um, as you all started walking out, Dell's head exploded. Too much orb. <laughs> Tragic. Um, yeah. Um, too much too much orb in a sitting and just head blew up. Also, um, someone in the chat has claimed to hydrate. So if you have a drink, consume it. Drinking. Oh yeah. Got Sounds across the room. Hang on. Hydrate or dihydrate. If I don't actually drink water, Fraz will uh, smack me whenever they come to visit this weekend. Well, yeah, they, they're the one who claimed it. I will be in danger. So I'm actually drinking water this time. Uh, but no, you all, all of what happened for Dell happened in the moment you guys all started walking to the door. So nothing was like oh, no. physically amiss. Unless Dell says something. Daddy. I don't think so i think he's just engrossed in just trying to solve the puzzle because now it's like hmm you have to un you there's some way to undo you <laughs> like he's just mm, very focused okay um you guys also decided to go downstairs Della, are you gonna stay in the room and ponder the orb or are you joining the group I think he's going to stay in the room because he doesn't, he knows that uh, Moxio didn't want us to flaunt it before and he wants to figure it out, but that means he can't be around other people. Um, oh. So, yeah, he, he's going to be sort of observing it. He'll let them know, like, I'm going to try and figure it out, um, but come get me if you need help or someone to tell your fortune, I guess. Would you like a hug? What? It's a hug. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. He legitimately does not know. I promise. Oh, no. oh, oh my Yefe would like to use her vertical jump to wrap her <laughs> tiny arms around Del's arm. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> okay, so wait, you want to do your vertical jump? I'm assuming that everyone else has a question of what they can do. I'm gonna set well, I was gonna say that like Hyacinth is like is Del sitting or standing? Is standing. I was gonna say that Hyacinth has just been like keeping an eye on Del and like before they were gonna leave and was just gonna offer this hug because he's had a very hard time. <laughs> it has been a day, TM. Him baby. <laughs> um from what I determined okay, so DFAs obviously do a vertical jump to lunge onto 
Del's arm. Hyacinth, you wish to give Del a hug. Um, I was gonna explain what a hug is to Del. <laughs> seeing his actions happen Go faster ahead. than talking, so I guess, yeah, DFA reacts before you can speak. Oh, DFA, how does this hug go? Exactly like it sounds. Arms and legs wrapped around arm. And squeezing. Mm -hmm. And she just goes, this is a hug. It's when you have so many feelings that you have to get them out. That's her entire understanding of it. Because anytime she was happy, sad, angry, anything in between her mom would hug her. And Aww. so her understanding of it is when you have too many emotions, you hug it out. When you have big feelings, they must be hugged. Exactly. Okay. He holds his arm very still so that like she's wouldn't, or sorry, they wouldn't actually accidentally get like harmed in the process. Um, and like very gently kind of reaches in like pat, pat on, on head. He's seen that happen before. Um, uh, okay. Uh, uh, j just, just the arm. Yes. She goes. Well, no. I mean, and she just kind of like looks at what she's doing. She goes. I have a hard time hugging people that are taller than me, and she goes. It works with like, and she points at Mogzio, and she just drops <laughs> off Dell's arm. And walks over to Mogzio to like hug him. Aww. And she goes, pat, pat. And she goes, but anything bigger than me is difficult. Oh, I see. I understand now. Thank you. I'm also impressed all of you've contained the urge to not just group hug Dell. <laughs> I was tempted. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Whoever is, uh, goes to hug him. <clears throat> right. What CFA has done was that Hyacinth like opens up their arms and says it's like usually with a hug between two people who are about the same size. You wrap your arms around each other, or you could even just wrap one arm around somebody's shoulder, and then you squeeze them lightly. And it's a thing like comfort. Like, whenever you wrap a baby in a blanket, sometimes it's for warmth, sometimes it's because you like each other, or you, if you have a rough day, sometimes a hug can help with that. And I know that you have had a rough day. He's, he's nodding, like, he's, he's actively listening, he's nodding, he's taking these in, and he sees that you've got your arms open, and he sort of, like, mimics your pose, and then shuffles forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. How tall is Dell? I think I said he's six foot. Okay, so Hyacinth and Dell are about the same height. Oh, good. So they are just gonna like pull him in gently for a hug at like the middle of Dell's back. Yeah. And then like scratch Dell's head a little bit. And it, you would notice that it's at, at the base of where Vera's ears would be. Oh, oh, that's cute. And just scratching a little bit lightly. And you feel something akin to like a little vibration in Hyacinth's chest. Oh, it's a baby. Ah. Kind of like a like a purr. That's so good. But it's a little bouncier. Because rabbits don't really purr, but they make some kind of noise. They do. Yeah. I had one. Uh, yes. And uh, Hyson says in Vera, it's okay to have long days. It's okay. Then pulls back and just pats Del on the shoulders and stays in the hug as long as he would like. Uh, yeah, no, he he is totally fine with all of this. It's it's something of like it, it starts off very stiff and awkward at first, and then it's just like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> And then after, like, a few seconds, he's like, oh, I, and then he'll pull away, like, yes, there is a normal amount of time for these things. Like, that's, like, in his face. But anyway, <laughs> sorry about the small derail, like, but. Uh. This is called character de development. 
character development. A baby. Be careful with your new knife. Maybe try tapping the orb with the knife and see if it does anything. Sometimes when I tap things with knives, it works. Um, you said you're just gonna tap it, nothing else? It's worth a try. What's the harm? <laughs> tap, tap, explodes. <laughs> the whole tapper got snowed. <laughs> it's the <laughs> elephant's <laughs> foot. In my fight or flight response. And I am a flightless bird. Anyway. <laughs> um, if you're gonna tap it, you can. But, um... I just might as well. I don't expect anything to happen, but it's just like, why not? Tap, tap. Nothing happens. It just goes clank, clank. It, it, it's solid. There's no echo from the inside. It's just, you just tap metal on metal. Honestly, that's good to know, though. There's something in there. Well, yeah. Whether it's mechanics or, or just, like, stuff, it, it's not, I don't know, like, just hollow. It's not a Fabergé orb. Exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> but, that's yes. Why they give us 2,000 anyway. Yeah, fuck, seriously. Um, but no, if that is all dealt, you will stay up in the room and fidget while the party goes uh, interrogate the town, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Ask nicely. Look, I didn't make a charisma character for the first time ever, y'all. It's very strange for me, but I'm just going to be up here uh, tinkering with things that I won't have a massive uh, negative to. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the rest of you head downstairs. Uh, is anyone staying with Dell, or is it going to be all of you? Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'll... I'll go down. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't think he'll get possessed. I'm... <laughs> Wait, wait, before before Elwood goes, he's gonna go up to to Dell and just give like a little, like a warm uh, head head like ruffle of the hair, like a head pat kind of thing. Just and then not even say anything and then walk out. Oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> Dell looks confused but happy, <laughs> and then he sits with the orb. <laughs> this is so much positive reinforcement in one day. <laughs> That's what happens when you murder somebody. You get positively reinforced. Yes. For legal reasons, do not positively reinforce murderers. <laughs> Unless they're baby. <laughs> Unless they're baby. Anyway. <laughs> the rest of you do head downstairs. Well, those of you who are going downstairs, head downstairs. The tavern is expectantly pretty lively. It's after a long day. Those who came after work have been filling the place up, drinking... Some are clearly already beyond drunk and gone to the world. Music is playing. Uh, Jonas is frantically running from end to end of the bar, trying to keep up with orders. And Focus is uh, chilling out near the door, being a bouncer and watching everything very uh, calmly and observantly. Where's Mogzio? Good question. Where is Mogzio? I'll be trailing behind, coming downstairs. <clears throat> what is DFA planning involving Mogzio? Yeah. <laughs> That's my question. That's a surprise tool to help us out later. Oh no, not the mystery Moogle <laughs> tools. Moogle tools, the mystery Moogle tools. <laughs> The Moogle of many things. The Moogle of many things. All right. Well, if nobody else is gonna, start, Hyacinth is gonna bunny hop their way over to Focus <clears throat> to bother this poor gent while he's working. He does observe you bunny hopping over to him. Arms crossed. Like a hop, a, <laughs> hop a skip and a jump. Yeah, his arms are crossed. Stone faced, sitting on a stool, leaning against the wall next to the door, and just noticing you. Doesn't say anything right away. I have stolen any silverware today. That's good. But I have a question for you. I might have an answer. There is a potential client. And I want to know if he's safe to work with. Would you know? Knowing 
what your profession is, Focus immediately thinks that's what you're talking about. So he's like racking his brain and goes, who is the client? His name is Gail. He's going to be in town for this week before he leaves the island. And he hired this group that another client I have has been working with. Um, and uh, Hythens is trying is basically working like their face is kind of like trying to figure out how much do I tell focus how much do I tell focus and besides you're, on you're fine while you're asking he's stroking his beard like pensively thinking about the person you're describing but the minute you mentioned the client hired another group the immediate reaction of wait all of you are doing what Hyacinth does. Oh God! Like in that immediate moment, because it's so little context, you just convinced Focus that all six of you are courtesans. Yes. Oh boy. So oh, Focus is wondering, like, why is a man pi- paying for two Mughals, a half Ilvan, <gasps> a Rogadin, a Vera, and whatever Dell is? What is? What are they planning? For the record, DFA has no idea what a courtesan is. None whatsoever, (laughs) so she's not even bothered by anything that's been going on, because she has no idea what any of it means. He hasn't said anything, but internally he is making that expression of, I'm not one to judge, but what would you do in that scenario? Uh, With me, as I go and talk to Focus, I'll go just for the hell of it just trailing behind me but i'll let you do the talking which in retrospect (laughs) is apparently not a great idea but i'll go along with it i'm just gonna nod are any of the rest of you with hyacinth right now um yeah yeah, i guess i'll work as nearby so at the moment you, you you're not it's a question of how much you're paying attention. Like, there's a possibility mm-hmm. you just got accused of being a courtesan. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Focus. Focus looks at Hyacinth. Goes. That's the, the traveler that came here recently, right? Yes. Mm. And he wanted us to fetch something from an abandoned place that nobody's lived in. Very big abandoned place that nobody's lived in. But I don't want to get in trouble for taking something from this place. No matter how much money he gives me, gives us. Try to get more money out of it, but of course not. So stingy. But focused um stops like stroking his beard, looks actually looks at you this time versus like staring at the ceiling in thought. You're, you already took something, didn't you? Well, you know, yes. I didn't take it. We took it. They say, like, quietly, just to fo- focus. <clears throat> we were hired for it, but I don't know if we should take it back and to avoid uh, trouble because I like it here you usually tell me not to take things but I do you know you do Penny took one of my forks earlier I was very sad but it's okay there was a note about that Jonas said I could I could keep it they Jonas made the mistake of not talking with Penny for I know. How about this? Okay. You, you tell me where you somewhere. tell me where you stole something from, and I'll tell you how dangerous it is. Not stole, took. You can't steal things that don't belong to anyone. Exactly. At, at that, he actually like perks up and goes, "What do you mean?" So. 
well, this place, very big, a big place, was apparently owned a long time ago by the people who made this town. You're telling me you guys went into the villa? Yes. It takes there a very really there. He takes a very uh deep uh inhale and goes. I'm gonna go talk to Jonas really quick. Don't Heisman. don't take any silverware. Uh, but focus, you you and Jonas let me go to the other abandoned house. What's different about this one? I didn't say you were in the trouble. Villa- the villa was just bigger, and there wasn't even as much stuff as in the other abandoned house. I didn't fall through the, through the floor of this one. He doesn't ask about the floor thing. He, just, he doesn't even, like, you can tell it's like, that's a question for another day, and pin, pinning that. Um, he takes his giant hand and gently places it on your head to be, like, calm yourself. Oh. I'm just going to talk to Jonas. Jonas okay. isn't going to tell anybody, is he? He just looks over at Jonas at the bar. If Jonas has the know-it-all to keep track of people's orders, I think he has the know-it-all to know when. I'll make sure, right? I will make sure. Okay. Thank you, you, Focus. He smiles very warmly and walks over to the bar. As he goes, he regards the rest of you and um, kind of apologizes for mm-hmm. Hyacinth's gestures to all of her, all of them. <laughs> in a way that a sibling would you um you all from where you are standing see focus start to talk to Jonas they're talking in a quiet enough tone where no one can hear them and um after a bit the discussion ends and focus returns and looks at uh Hyacinth you're not in trouble what exactly did you take from the, the villa? Looks at the, uh, everyone else with this look of like, do we we tell him? <laughs> I look at Molly's Do we? <laughs> Elric's hand throbs with memories. Ah, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. quieter we can tell you while you do your job of watching things so nobody else knows maybe is there a back room we could talk in when you ask focus is like all right he points to hyacinth dfa and Mogzio. you three talk the rest of you mingle so that no one notices that a group is now heading into the back. DFA starts talking immediately. Oh god. Oh god. (laughs) Before we go to the back, Hyacinth just like touches Corey's arm and pats it and says, I'll be back. And then follows Focus. So, um, DFA, what do you say immediately? She starts just talking about whatever's rattling through her mind at that point. Like, I think that guy needs a haircut, and I don't like the way it smells in here, and I'm hungry, and I miss my mom, and this armor's kind of itchy, and she just goes. Mogs, you and Hyacinth, what do you two do as this is, you know, you three are making your way to the back room with focus during that? I wait until the trip hazard is out of my my walking distance, and I wait until... She stops talking. <laughs> Realizing that it's going to be a while of Hyacinth's waiting for DFA to stop talking. As soon as he hears that she's hungry, uh, I'll just kind of like nonchalantly like go r- rummaging through my uh, trench coat thing for, uh, I believe I had the chocobo cookie before, so the, the cactuar cookie. And I'll just kind of like slowly just kind of like shove it into DFA's, like, mid- mid-sentence. <laughs> it is, in fact, enough to shut her up. <laughs> uh, for those playing at home, DFA loves her sweets. Yeah. 
once DFA is uh, eating the cookie, Hive Sims is going to say, Gale hired us to acquire an orb. Claim that it wasn't anything special to everyone else, but to the right person, it would be something special. 2,000 gold among us is money. Gil. 2,000 gil among us is a lot of money, but it's not worth being run off or possibly handing over something that's maybe worth more. Uh, but mostly I just don't want to be run off because I like it here. For now. Focus is l listening to you He's a little amused by uh, Magzio's method of quieting DFA. Um, he does watch to make sure she doesn't choke on the cookie, though. <laughs> well, he he did say just shoves it in her mouth the minute she had a chance. Like like slowly, like you're trying to. Yeah, <laughs> but he's still going to be like, she's going to be OK, right? There's a moment where it's questionable, where she's just kind of like, Eck. <laughs> but then she kind of like writes herself and she's like, okay, I got it. And just goes right back to eating it. So you broke into the villa. You stole an orb. This orb. Right. You broke in, technically. Uh, we walked in. There were no doors. Ignoring the details of D E. Funny an entry? Uh, this orb has it done anything since you've taken it he's uh, looking to all three of you for the record I don't know we gave it to the shifty one <laughs> Del isn't shifty he's just sweet Del is just simple yeah he's shifty Del Speaking, simple people are my specialty. They're my favorites, actually. They don't ask you to do weird things. And they usually tip very well. But we had Del look at it. Because Del does things with the mist and the magics and whatnots. Did you and happen to break anything or take anything else while you were in there? I took a butcher knife. It's a little rusty. I'll have to get it cleaned. Just out of curiosity, did you pull out the butcher knife when you asked, when you mentioned it, or are you just, just talking about it? No, I, Hyacinth is like rummaging in the bag looking for the butcher knife. Okay. Okay. Um, Bulkus just... He has the expression of an older sibling who's used to this kind of bullshit. But the word butcher knife, his eyes do widen a bit to be like, did I just hear butcher knife? Then he goes, he just lets you continue. There was also, I also took a ledger, a book. I thought maybe I could use it. I don't know. Books are so strange sometimes. I didn't really read it, but, oh, and candles, because candles become useful sometimes. You don't really have candles in the forest, unless you just reuse the wax, unless it goes away. It's a whole thing. And then um, an ink quill. I was just going to put it in my hair. I'm not really right with it. And then Hyphen points to the spoon, the bone spoon in their hair. Like this one. I got this from a different place. But that's it and the orb. But I think you really just care about the orb. I right? do. But it, it didn't do anything. Del said it wasn't magical. We only ask because no. when I brought it up to Jonas... Apparently, there was discussion in town about the villa, and I had to know what you did. That is. It. Oh, oh, there's there was this thing. Um, it's like, uh, what is it called? There, I I was at a client's house, and they have kids, and they have like toys that they put in it. It's it's not a box. It's it's like a house for their toys. Focus has oh, like no idea what you're talking about. Um, um, a toy house. They, they had like a toy house, but it was a toy town, and it looked like the entirety of this town. Oh. They had 
the scale model. That, yeah, they had that in one of the rooms. Yes. Um, I don't you, know. I was going to tell you guys because I thought maybe you would like to put it here so it's not all alone and dusty. Apparently, and focus um, relaxes a bit more now. Because of your actions with the prison and dealing with the bandits and all, as promised, we were going to reward you. It seems Penny says that she came to an agreement with you, I guess. Rooms. We got rooms. Yes. Well, they got rooms. I had a room. Jonas had actually talked to some of the others in town and had another idea as a reward. Um... Apparently, we were going to offer you a place to stay permanently if you wish to stay on the island. That way you're not living in the tavern. But it seems that you have already gotten a job for, with this gale. The orb that was curious, I, I, I'm wondering why they would want it so much. Let alone how they knew it was here. Did you already give it to them? No. 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 That's why I'm asking. I... You know I have bad experiences with some clients. I do. And sometimes giving them things is not the best thing. That's true. No Um, matter how much they pay you. He looks at Mogsio. You are the clever sort, I've noticed. What is your take on all this? On what exactly? The The, orb? The the idea that you were hired to do this and the fact that they want to pay you that much. Highly skeptical. That is clever. Especially given that your client is unknown to all of you. Yeah. But he asked about the bandit job. Like, like he knew. But yeah, we literally we, just got back from doing it. We, yeah. And it wasn't really a job. It's more like we escaped. I, I don't. Also, I wasn't wrong. Not all bandits are bad. Yes, um, Jonas and I met... Some of them just need money. Jonas and I met the one that you brought back. He's apparently volunteered to do some work for the town to make up for his uh, past deeds. Is he going into my line of work? I really want him to go into my line of work. I think that he would do a really good job. He actually volunteered to um, start a form of guild in the town. Like, like a brothel guild? He is starting what um, some would call back in the mainland the Thieves Guild. I guess that's fine too. He figures that it'll teach others to know what to look for if there are future ne'er-do-wells. But he also figured it'd be good for the children to have something to do running messages back and forth for the town or doing other Things of that ilk. It'll be good skills if they ever leave the island. Though we did make him promise he would not teach them to do anything illegal. Good caveat. Hmm? <laughs> so it's a good caveat. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> as much as thieves are, you know, not ideal, they have their uses. Better to have a bandit that's on your side than one who's operating against you. Isaac looks like vaguely offended in like a younger sibling way. That's fair. You, you can be offended. <laughs> the statement. <laughs> Focus doesn't really have much else to say, but he does lean in and says, If I were you, I would ask around and see if anyone else has heard about this gale. But my instinct is to not trust him entirely. 
it was good to ask. You're the one person I can ask these things without that look people have. Um, thinks about it and focuses, well, he had to have come from a boat. He's, he's not from here. In the morning, when, you know, everyone's actually at work and not here drinking a storm, maybe good to ask those who've come into the dock and ask if any of them brought him here. See what they know. Okay. But be careful, because if you ask too much, it may get back to him. I don't want anything bad happening to you all just because you asked questions. Is he staying here? He's not, actually. He's come into town a few times, but he's never stayed at the tavern. Oh, that's rude. It is curious, being that we're the only establishment in town for lodging. Oh, oh, um, Hyacinth looks at Mogzio. Do we, that thing we fought, do we tell? No, no, no. <laughs> vigorously shakes his head. <laughs> Mogzio is truly a fan of the art of loose ships, sink ships. Shut the fuck <laughs> up before I slap you. Hyacinth just turns back and says, so those bandits, um, they kind of kidnapped us, but we got away, obviously. And he says, not that bad. So don't hold it against him. I was just going to tell you that we lost a fight against them because we didn't really fight. It was a lot of them against us. Well, yeah. we kind of did fight. Yes, the one but you it brought... Was mostly just, it's fine. The one you brought back informed us of uh, how they found you and then how you made a quite miraculous escape. They were they were vague on the details though. Do you, this is well. Isa said they had a fighting pit. Is that still useful here? I because I have this client Corey, and I think she really really likes fighting, and I promised mm-hmm. her a good time. And like, so I would like her to fight more things, so then she can continue to have a good time. Fighting pit, you said. Um. If you want, my shift ends, I will go back to the where you were and check it out. If you've cleared the place out, I should be okay to look around. And I can get back don't to mind you. the blood stains. <laughs> don't don't mind the bodies. I already took what was needed from them to get them back where they need to be. So He nods. Definitely a fixer upper. <laughs> uh focus nods and uh Says, yes, I will definitely check that out after my shift then. Um, you said there was a fighting pit, right? Uh, well, he, they made it into a fighting pit. Yeah. He, he, um, he makes note of it and says, yeah, I'll check it out and get back to you after I investigate it with uh, what he found and what it could be used or whatnot. But then he's like, but for now, don't be stupid. Don't steal anything tonight. Stairs directly tomorrow. And try to not go around saying what you took. If this scale wants that much money for it, it must be something others may want. Last thing you need is someone else in town coming after you because you spoke to them. And with that focus, leaves the back room with you guys and heads back to his little perch near the door. You guys... What are you doing? I sent beelines to Corey. <laughs> Drops an arm around an arm and is attached at the hip. Oh, hi! <laughs> so what happened? Hey, God. Okay. Did you come to any conclusions? We should wait. I know what I figured. So, they were talking about hooking us up with some more permanent logic? Mm hmm. Sounds great, actually. I actually meant to still be in the room talking to what's his face? Focus. Oh, okay. Um, 
Focus does say there was discussion of it. Um, if you want to know more right away, I would say talk to Jonas. But if you don't mind waiting, I would say wait till the morning where um, everything will be told to you as a group. But it's up to you. All right. That's fine. Okay. Also, a reminder, because we, when we left off last night, we were like, you know, it is still the evening shift. Um, yes, you guys did have a long rest to wait till nightfall. But if you guys do not want to do anything for the night, you can go to bed and start fresh in the morning. You don't have to pull an all-nighter. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that sounds like a plan. <laughs> Unless anyone else has something they want to do. We know Dell's orbing. Um, <laughs> Dell's orbing, yes. <laughs> the happened with the orb. All <laughs> hail the glow orb. I'm just picturing Dell trying to do the thing that, um, what's his name, does from uh, Labyrinth with the, the orb. The oh, Jareth. Yeah, just orb, trying to yeah. fushigi the thing. <laughs> yeah. And every time they screw up, they're like, oh, I gotta try it again. I just imagine Dell smacking it with the knife every now and again, making sounds. If I tap it in the upper in the upper quadrant, it does this. But lower quadrant, that's a little bit flatter. There's a notebook There's dedicated. A class in Bard. God, <laughs> no, I can't. I have no charisma. Anyway, but no, if everyone is fine, they can go to bed for the night. It's up to you guys. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, also, DFA, how was your cookie? It wasn't enough. Oh, no. It's never <laughs> enough. What do you do now that you've finished the cookie and the conversation has ended? <laughs> I think DFA would go back up to her room and just kind of decompress. Okay. She starts taking off her helmet, her armor, all of that. I know, right? Scandalous. She puts on her favorite night clothes. It's just curls up on her half of the bed. Moxie would probably go up to the room um, and probably just position a chair like against the wall um, so that he can face Dell as he ponders. So at the moment, but just... De so in the, at the moment, Dell's still in DFA's room. DFA's laying down on their side of the bed, and Boggsy was watching. Yeah, just okay. relaxing and watching. Okay. Um, Elric, you're just going to go straight to bed? Yeah, I'm going to go straight to bed. Okay. What about Corey and Hyacinth, since you two are apparently attached to the hip? Well, was there... Anything else that y'all talked about back there? Uh, yes, but it's not for general audiences. Do you want to come up to my room and we can talk? Sure, why not? And while they're up there, Hyacinth just, like, info dumps completely on everything and anything that was mentioned, including DFA talking about the people who need a haircut, being hungry, Magazio shoving the cookie in, like, focus telling about how the town wanted to give them a permanent place to live, like, that kind of stuff. All of that is just info dumped from this bunny onto Corey. Corey's gonna nod a lot. She'll She'll retain everything, but she's not even going to try to get a word in edgewise. Just nod, 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 nod. Oh, but I did ask about the fighting pit to see if maybe there could be use for that, because you said you like fighting. I do really like fighting things. So then they don't have to, like, kidnap people, so then you can fit, fight something. So, And I thought that would make you happy. It really would, actually. Oh, man. See? I'm very good at this. You really are, and not the way I was expecting, but yeah, yeah what way were you great. expecting? I don't know. Do you? 
know what I do? You like silverware and you like the forest and you like to make people happy some people happy i like to make some people make some horrifying noises like the way that you absolutely stomped that man can you teach me how to do that i feel like that could be useful one, the chair leg through the eye or the killing him by nailing him in the crotch. Both? I can try. Okay. I'd like that. For anyone at home watching, this is a different, completely different type of flirting I've ever saw one. <laughs> like, if this is flirting, my brain is like, wait, what? Is this flirting or is this friendship? <laughs> You'll never know. Who knows? Why not both? <laughs> well, according we to can... <laughs> we can get to that uh... at another date, probably tomorrow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I'm gonna just assume that this conversation just goes where it goes. And... Yeah, no, um, yep. we can chat night. for an hour or two and go to bed. Okay, so they yeah. go for an hour. Um, the chat goes for about an hour, as you said. Um, no one, no one at all gets um, interrupted during what they're doing in their rooms. Um, you guys do get a long rest. And this is we will take a quick break. Yeah. Okay. So everyone quickly get up yourselves, stretch, snack, drink, whatever you need to do. We'll be back in about five hominials or so. Or so. Okay. Okay. Nice. Which I can only you... have two at a time, though. That's yeah. I know, same. Which which ones you get? Thin mints, tagalongs, and I think I want to get the lemon ones. Nice. The lemon ones are good. I think I had them last year. I'm a Samoa fan. Nice. Yep, trefoils and Samoas for me. Hell yeah. Tagalongs. This is where we discuss the the party's Girl Scout cookie order, and uh, <laughs> that will determine if they I actually stay together. Six boxes of tagalongs. <laughs> Uh, in DFA sleep, um, they are using their powers to contact another realm where cookies made by Girl Scouts are being delivered to DFA. <laughs> but anyway, no, um, you guys all have a, a fairly good rest. Did Dell even sleep? Yes, because I... He, he has to. He, okay. he at okay. least has to do that. He yes. has to have a mandatory shutdown period. Okay, just making sure there wasn't... You have wasn't... to turn him off. You have to let Windows reset. <laughs> just making sure DFA and Mogzio didn't wake up to him literally still in the corner like did it, did it, did it, did it. He probably fell asleep. He probably went inert. He went unconscious. He, he went on standby. Uh, I don't know how to put it yet. Uh, he went into standby mode. Probably like while holding it and just kind of like very gently leaned him back like into the corner that he was sitting in so yeah he's just like sitting up in the corner he hasn't slumped over anything he's just still sitting up as though he's just leaning back okay. <laughs> uh, eyes are closed yes that being said um whichever you decide to wake up in what order obviously it's up to you guys the day is yours DFA is a pretty early riser, so she'd probably be up pretty early. Okay. How do you react to the Mogzio sitting in a chair in a uh, sleeping Dell? She doesn't even take notice. She just gets up, starts putting her armor back on. She grabs one of the pastries for breakfast. And she's just going about her business, not even acknowledging it. All right. Is Mogzio still asleep, or is he waking up too? Um, I mean, I imagine if DFA is stirring, then Mogzio is waking. Okay. Uh, 
<clears throat> I guess so. But, uh, I mean, Muggsy would probably, sorry, <laughs> Muggsy would probably just, uh, yeah. kind of, like, sit up and pull out his cards and, like, kind of thumb through them and, like, watch Dell and then grab a pastry or something. Okay, okay. Uh, what about the others? I think Selwark's going to wake up in his room. He still has that box of donuts that the DFA let him have. So he's going to grab one of those, get ready, and head downstairs and wait for everyone. What about uh, Corey and Hyacinth? What what did you do this morning? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Well, I mean, it's, you, you two are the <laughs> only ones who haven't answered yet. <laughs> I was muted. Um, <laughs> I was too. I'm gonna wake up, and I don't like mornings much, so I'll oh. blear, blearily wander down for breakfast, maybe knock on Hyacinth's door and ask if she wants anything. They want anything? Hyacinth is, is like dead to the world, knocked out sleeping. <laughs> After living in the forest and having to, having to wake up with the sun, they enjoy city life and have and being able to sleep as late as they can. But will probably like make some kind of like grunt of acknowledgement to the knock on the door and say, mm, "Pants, I'll do pants later." <laughs> I was asking about food, but okay. Food, yes, fine pants. I'll bring him breakfast. Two shakes of a tail, and you hear snoring. <laughs> Corey's just gonna like pull the door shut and walk downstairs. <laughs> Once you get downstairs, you do find a DFA, a Mogzio, and an Elric. I'm assuming Dell is still charging. Or is Dell awoken? Uh, early I think like soon? right when he hits that eight hour mark, then he will be awake. Okay. Then, um, then you probably woke up a little like shortly after the two Moogles left the room. That's fair. Nobody hears the window startup sound. Um. <laughs> Actually, no, for, just, just for the, no, just for that, uh, I'm, I'm going to make you roll a um, stealth. How <laughs> how loud is your startup noise? What is my stealth? My stealth, uh, um, twelve. Let's see how that goes. That's my total twelve. Oh, you got a twelve. Um, yeah. Corey can hear it better because they're going down towards the stairs and everything. Hyacinth hears <laughs> something muffled between the walls, but doesn't know what it is. So, I don't think it's the actual window startup noise, but I think it is a very distinct sort of, like, ting 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 or something, like, to that effect. I don't know music, but it it's it's something that's supposed to be bright and cheery, like, hey, it's time to turn on. Um, yeah. So, Corey, you hear that through the walls, and you recognize it's coming from the room that Dell was in last you checked. <laughs> So I'm just not even going to... Yeah, we're just not going to push. Yeah, I'm not either. Um, also, I'm because... Just, someone, assume. someone in chat mentioned this. The inn does have Moogle-sized rooms. However, due to the fact that DFA has acquired, like, an entire fucking surplus of bakery goods, they are in a normal-sized room, so there's space. Uh, anyway, you guys head downstairs. Uh, Dell will follow you shortly. Yeah. Um, as it was yesterday, Penny is on shift, and she is preparing and serving breakfast to those who ask for it. Uh, today's breakfast is an assortment of normal breakfast foods including, but not limited to, toast, eggs, bacon, sausage, um, only because, let me get curious for this one, cinnamon rolls the size of your head. Yes. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. 
and uh, a few pastries, though I think at the moment all of you have your fill of pastries. No, Alark has a sweet tooth. He's going to get a cinnamon roll. Okay. <laughs> uh, the cinnamon roll will cost him a gill, because that thing is big. Got it. Like, this, I'm not kidding. This thing is about the size of your head. Right. DFA tries to barter one of her pastries for a cinnamon roll. Um, okay. Um, Can I assist? <sighs> it's artisanal. That's why I'm thinking. I'm like, mm, I'll allow it. I think, what would uh, we have this count? Um, Am I, I well, I mean, if I'm being truthful, oh, I'm it's diplomacy. And yeah, that's, I'm, I'm like, I, I would say it's diplomacy, yeah. Can DFA convince Penny in a diplomatic way to exchange a, a pastry for a giant cinnamon roll? But Mogzio does assist. One second, I'm looking for my modifier. Oh, okay. Twenty-three. Penny likes you. She thinks you're cute. She also finds it very adorable how you're like, I want that, and I have whatever you're offering in exchange. But she doesn't tell you, but you can kind of get the hint. She does like Wyatt's confectionery stuff, so you offering her some is like good deal in her mind. She says that you can have one for the trade. No more, no less. It's just, so, it's just you the getting cinnamon one. Rolls. Yes. The cinnamon roll. Uh-huh. Is it the size of their heads or it's, my head? It is the size of Elric's head. So about the size of, of a, like, a normal, si medium-sized person's head. So for you, it would be very huge. She'll rip it in half and give half of it to Mogzio. <laughs> okay. Uh, Corey, what about you and Dell as you come down and see the breakfast that is available to everyone? Well, um, the first thing I'm going to do is panic slightly and wonder if Hyacinth is a vegetarian and I don't know it. And then I'm just going to get a giant breakfast for myself and, like, I'll get Hyacinth the cinnamon roll and some other stuff. Okay. Um, it'll cost you, for all of your stuff, two gil. Okay. Because you're technically getting two people's things. Yeah, I'll get the Hyacinth the cinnamon roll and a smaller version of the gigantic meal I just ate. Okay. Um, and Dell, what about you? Uh, he's he's going to get um, another thing of fizzy water, but this time he'll put lemon. Oh. Uh, as you order, Penny's like, you do know you can actually eat. The food is good. Oh, I have a um, sensitive stomach. I, I, I don't want to buy a whole thing, but only eat three bites. So somebody else can have it. She tilts her head and looks at you. Hold on. Goes in the back and comes out with um, what could only be described as a kids' meal breakfast, where like the pancake, the pancake like the pancakes are like the mini ones you used to get in the stores. Um, a t like I want to say like those little travel box size of cereal amount, and one slice of toast cut into four triangles for you. That is so cute. And she's like, I just want to know you ate something like you. I mean, with respect, you look like if I sneeze too hard, you're going to fall over. <laughs> I assure you, I would not, but I will take this. Um, thank you. How much? <laughs> <laughs> she looks, oh. she smiles and goes, just, just one gill, dear. Okay. And he like, he just takes it and puts it down and slides it over and then looks like, yes, right? She takes it and nods and says, please enjoy the breakfast and do not worry if you don't finish. But you can take your time. Oh, okay. Uh, th thank you. 
and he's just going to sort of scoop it up and go over and be like, oh, I did the whole thing. I did the whole thing. I don't think he's actually ordered food yet, y'all, because, like, again, he doesn't need to. So he's just been sort of like, no, no, I, I like the water for the fizzies, but it's never been like, food? <laughs> so he goes and he sits and he watches everybody and then, like, does what they do to eat the food and is delighted to find that it's, like, nice. It's cool. But he can only stomach, like, maybe six bites total. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I love. Also, I cannot tell you how hard I happy stemmed at that thought of just, like, the tiny little kid's meal. It just made me very happy. <laughs> As it should. Like, t- Penny is trying to be very accommodating and trying to be like, oh, wait, this person isn't, like, you know, one of those hardy people who, like, devour everything in front of them. So, you know, gotta be a little... Got to be a little motherly. Like, as long as you're eating, I don't care. That's so precious. You guys are all gathered around. It is morning. Um, Hyas- Sans Hyacinth, who's upstairs dreaming of hippity hoppity through the woods. I will say that Hyacinth does, like, come downstairs, just very disheveled, long curly hair undone from braids, Sans flowers. And they're they're thankfully wearing pants and a top, but like bundled in the green cloak that they got and just looks very disgruntled with the world and just sits next to Corey. Speaking it under their breath in Vera about how much the sun is evil. I have no idea what you're saying, but I got you breakfast. I don't know what you ate, so I kind of just got one of everything. I eat most things. You're not... Are you a vegetarian? Or is that racist? I'm sorry. It's it's not racist. We... I... Okay. Eat oh. meat sometimes. It just depends. I, things taste different in cities. Like, vegetables taste different. Animals taste different. In the right circumstances, people taste different. Okay. <laughs> I think the entire table just had like a moment of what? Huh? And Hyacinth will just look at the cinnamon roll, stare at it, pull uh, out the bone spoon that is somehow still lodged in, and just stab the side of it and pull off a piece. <laughs> These poor cinnamon rolls are going to be like the victims. <laughs> of a massacre. Turns says, just turns the course. I make sure it's dead first before I eat it. That's mm. what I was told. And then eats. <laughs> Go right ahead. Oh god. <laughs> um, in case you guys are wondering, no one else is is in the place. Sit, Sans, uh, you lot, Petty, and um, two patrons. They are in the opposite corner of the room. One is just reading a, um, what looks to be a letter, the other one is just eating their food. So you pretty much have the room to yourselves. That's nice. Uh, also, Penny has uh, absconded mm-hmm. to the back to continue making food, doing kitchen duties, whatever they need to do. So you guys, if you guys want to discuss things before you start in your day, that is... Totally available. Where do we even start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. So this, so this Gale guy, he's a man, right? And they're trouble most of the time, especially ones with money. No offense, and turns to like. <laughs> Elric. You have no argument for me. <laughs> that looks confused, but nods. Do we give him the orb? I... The ball. The, the ball. The toy. Do we give him the toy? I think it would probably be in our best interest to find out what it might be capable of. Yeah, is there someone in town we can take the orb to? 
that might know what it is. Um, Mogzio, roll a local. It's my one knowledge skill. How can you? Oh, yeah. Okay. I pay attention to your skills. I know what you guys have. Sometimes. Whew. Sometimes. Well, after fumbling two natural 20s, I had just, in the meantime, I just rolled a natural 19. So I'll take it still. Uh, okay. 26. Um, you know that the... Because Dell did say it was technological and not magical... You know there's the blacksmith. They would probably know the make and who like the physical aspects of it. Um you also know that since it was found in the villa of the people who made the town originally, your best bet would be to ask one of the community leaders. But that would involve tracking them down and, like, talking to a politician. Mm. And that may just open up the can of worms that we just broke into the villa that you guys, you know, kind of just leave up there. We found this little thing. And you've right. been the most very, like, hey, let's not talk about the orb. Yeah. <laughs> Dealing with authorities or higher ups is Mogzio's probably least least ready action. But you, you mm. also, but you do know that the blacksmith might know the um, I don't want to say technical know out of it, but be able to have a better understanding than you you lot do either way. Yeah, depending on how technical they are or their uh... skills are. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe it might even be worth paying them to spend some time trying to figure it out for us. That's a possibility. But I mean, they don't know any better. No, they but... They where we got it. <laughs> but, it, is, it but it is an option that is available to you. Right. I will bring those two options up to the to the group. Unless anyone has any other ideas. Well, Del, you've spent a lot of time pondering the orb. Any insights yet? Uh, it, it DM, can I make another, like, tech roll for the fact that I was, like, just fucking around with it until I went to sleep? Um... Um, you can do another one, but in, since you're doing it based on cumulative hours spent, you can have advantage. Oh shit! Okay, thank you. Because like you were oh, going for you were going for quite a bit. Ooh. Oh, hello. Uh, nineteen plus five is twenty-four. Go, don't go. You, you were able to discern, as I mentioned, the every now and then you were able to move it like a Rubik's cube. Um. Yeah. You remember the thing that we talked about? Um, yeah. They don't know, but they, you know. I, um, you also were able to discern uh, the lines and indents, circles, whatever you want to call them. If you put it on a flat surface, it looked very specific, like they were put there with intent versus random etchings. Okay. Gotcha. If that made any sense, congrats. No, yeah, it, it does. Um, I haven't found a way to, I guess, open it or make it sort of unveil something to me, but I know that it's made with definitive purpose. Sorry, Dell is reciting all yes. of this. I'm, I'm making sense of it as well. Okay. As I said, it, it's not magic, but it is tech. The lines and divots and everything uh, will will move with some limitations. It, it seems to be very, very two-dimensional in the way that they'll move back and forth, side to side. Um, and, and they were put there with intention. There's, there's a, a plan behind its placement. I, I haven't found what that is yet. Um, uh, Can... Oh. 
You're fine. Okay. Uh, also, I might ask one of you to also hold it when we get back uh, and see if it'll talk to you. Talk, talk, to, talk you. to us? The party talk. was too stunned to speak. <laughs> right. Is it, is it friendly? Mm -hmm. I, it, I, it, I, I don't know if it was actively talking or if it was sort of summoning a, a little bit of a, a of a memory, but I, I heard some stuff that, that made sense as words to me. Um, I, I don't know if it's maybe beyond a, beyond a person's normal ability to hear, um, but, but it's worth a shot. Nothing bad, uh, nothing malicious, and I don't even know if it necessarily had intent behind it, but words were spoken that I heard. Can I try to... So I have the appraise ability. Yeah. But I also have... I'm trying to think of what I was going with. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. I also have knowledge with nature. Would it... Would I be able to argue that I know something to do... I, I have a vague knowledge of something to do with map making um, and or like directional things to do with nature specifically you would have experience in terms of like when in the woods or anything like you would know that moss grows in certain parts of the trees you would know um rivers only flow certain directions you would have like survivalist knowledge i guess you could say map making wise if that's what you're asking because I'm, I'm trying to think of how like Vera would explain, uh, like in secret, how to navigate their woods to each other is what I'm kind of going with. Um, yeah, no, I, I can see what you're going with. Um, what exactly do you want to roll to do? I guess would be the question. I was gonna try and see if it would make sense for Hyacinth to think. Oh, what if we ask this device if it can show us where to go? Because that's where she, what she does with trees. Oh, okay. So you pretty much want to do, um, uh, uh, oh, magical orb, tell us the tell us the way. <laughs> it's gonna guide our way to Canyon it. Mountain. It can't it, hurt. I because I, I want to try. I don't think like it would if it would make sense if Hyacinth Hyacinth was like, well, you know, if this orb talks to Dell, kind of like how the trees talk to the Vera of making sure that like we know the forest, like maybe. If Dell really likes the orb and the orb really likes Dell and Hyacinth really likes trees and trees kind of not always like Hyacinth. You can so try, if... you can suggest or try to roll for it. Um, I would say. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, would it make sense if I had Hyacinth try to explain that? You can, you can try to explain it. Like, um, I wouldn't make you roll to explain. It's more of a question of, will they understand you? Okay. Uh... I would. Going to attempt to do that, and Hyacinth is basically going to say how, like, whenever Vera live in their forests, like they have a very intimate knowledge of plants and nature and their trees and things. So they usually know the best ones to ask questions or ask for insights, directions. They know how to basically see if a pathway is safe by just spending time with a tree. Because, you know, if you're going to go climb a tree, you want to make sure that tree's not going to drop you. Yeah, no, fair. So if the, uh, if the orb is talking, Hyacinth is wondering if the orb is trustful or if it's a, uh, a mistrustful tree in disguise. Has anyone tried licking it? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like pennies. Uh... Okay, what am I rolling for? Um... To convey your knowledge of what you know, I would say make it a nature roll. Okay. Oh, that's not a good roll. Ten. You're able to explain with a bit of difficulty because you, you realize you're talking to non-Vera things that are like common sense to you. 
so while you're explaining it, there there are moments where you're not realizing they wouldn't understand these terms, these things, or they may not even know what the fuck you're talking about, period. But you are able to get the gist across. Of what your idea is. So do you think the orb is a good tree or a bad tree? Conversation-wise, at least. Um. Hmm. I, I guess, guess you could, you could ask, ask it. It's possible. I. I don't know if it's necessarily good or bad yet, or or even is able to. Um be either of those or or if it's simply a um enhanced echo effect but if someone else carefully uh uh holds it sees if it will talk to you in the same way then we should be able to determine from there and since you know how to talk to trees it it will probably be good for for you to do it first right do you do you need to introduce me to the orb because usually we have to introduce new Vera to the trees sometimes not always but sometimes if it will help I don't see any harm I only have to ask try to drop me. I only have to ask because it was mentioned by them is DFA gonna try to lick it <laughs> if she can reach it yeah I mean, I at the moment I don't know where it is, so I'm assuming like I have to ask. Like the upstairs. moment it comes back into view of her, mm. and she thinks she can, she probably will. Okay, just figured I'd cover that base before we get to it. I think if, for now it is safe. We talked in Dell's bag because he's like, "Oh, we can't bring it out around other people," so it's in his bag for now, and he'll probably like go back to the room before he takes it back out. <laughs> He has no wish to get his hands messed. He has learned. Yeah, you know, it stings. Don't do that. Yeah. I should have made you take damage for that, because, damn, that actually hurt my hand, <laughs> like, when I did it. Um, But no, it, it, if that is the plan, you guys can continue with breakfast or continue talking and then go about and try that. I'm going to say Hyacinth finishes, like, half of the breakfast and then pushes the rest over to Corey. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> but the entire time they're eating, they, they they literally stab whatever food it is once, and then they eat normal. <laughs> Just to make sure. You gotta be careful. It might be a mimic. <laughs> oh god, that'd be... Corey oh. finds this weirdly endearing. <laughs> oh god, how horrible would I be if I made one of the fucking um, seven rolls a mimic? A mimic. <laughs> He was a tyrant and they got stabbed with the spoon, so. <laughs> That's all I was saying. Oh, that would have been so fucked up. Uh, anyway, yes. Um, does Mogzio, Elric, uh, or anyone else do anything while they're con conducting all this breakfast talk? Uh, oh. Just listen carefully and I guess uh, go with who, if, if Hyacinth does, is going to try to uh, ponder the orb herself in the room and. I'll go with and make sure things go smoothly. All right. I would probably hop down first, actually. I'll okay. head up. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do anything with it, but just to make sure that it's safe. I mean, we left it upstairs, yeah. Yeah, it's in Dell's bag. Dell's bag, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. He's, he just tucked it away, like out of sight, so that random people that come inside wouldn't see it either. Yeah, just grab a handful of food or whatever, and then move to the. Uh, to the back to the table up top. All right, so that's what you guys are gonna do. Proceed as discussed, and God, I'm wanting to know how this is gonna go, but I'm also petrified of how it's gonna go. And uh, once Dell gets back upstairs, um, the first thing I want to ask him once we're out of like earshot of discussing the orb around other people um, is. Uh, were you able to talk to it? Oh. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, 
Well, it, it it said a couple of words at me, but I wasn't able to speak back. We, you did too. I was just curious. Fair enough. <laughs> the uh, yeah. the danger level in my mind goes up if you can talk back to it. <laughs> oh. Well, the saying is, if you hear voices, it's fine. It's when they talk back to you that's concerning. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm okay with letting someone else handle it. I was gonna make a make a make a make a play to be the one that messes with it, but I'm okay with someone else doing it since we don't have that much information right now. Understandably, we want to make the most effective. Sorry, I I swear he he goes off into an agreement that has like a bunch of of just casual references to like increase like probability and event pos and event possibilities and the way to like mitigate the variables that you don't know and he just says this off the cuff completely like deadpan just like conversationally as he's pulling the orb out of the bag um and then just like looks over my you like right i would see it was kind of like goes yeah just, <laughs> just a little bad just what the fuck <laughs> I'm joking when I say this, but uh, yeah, Mugs, you roll a, ling a linguistics thing to see if you can discern a word <laughs> Mugs, you just said. Can I roll linguistics? 16. <laughs> Wait. I'm smiling and nodding going on. Mm -hmm. I have that skill. If you guys want to roll to a linguistics to see if you understood Dell, by all means. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> you, you, wait, you said you got a 16, Mugsio? He should be our right background. Oh, yeah, I just saw that. Okay, um, yeah, he says 16, so Mogzio does understand, but with a bit of, like, I'm not sure if I'm impressed or embarrassed that I understood that. I got a 14. Yeah. You got a 14? Yeah. You understood, like, five words, and you're just like, wait. <laughs> what? No, like, you're able to use context to figure <laughs> out the rest, but you're just like, I have heard those words. Don't know what they mean, though. <laughs> I got a five. I got a seven. <laughs> you two understood the tone, but not a word. <laughs> uh, Hyacinth is just like, he's so cute. I just, I, he, I need to tell, teach him how to use that knife. He is too cute for his own good. He's going to get into so much trouble. Yeah. I have to protect him from himself. <clears throat> but yes, you guys are all in the, uh, the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming Dell's gonna take out the orb. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, once the... <laughs> once he gets that that sort of like just like uh, that 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 surface level like agreement back from from Mazio, it's just like a little like nod kind of thing, and then he'll uh, he'll take the orb and just sort of um. Uh, pat it like like he's seen you know elric and some of the others do with with other people just sort of like pat pat um orb uh this this is this is hyacinth and she's gonna try to talk to you okay and he's gonna like pause for a second see if he gets a response and then if not just sort of shrug and hand it over Hyacinth is going to grab this orb with both hands, gently, and then bring it to their chest, and just look at it, and start speaking in Vera, introducing themselves. Okay. And explaining that, like, when... Uh, when my community meets new trees, we always introduce ourselves, so then we can hope for the best kind of relationship between each other. I hope that we can also have a good relationship between each other, even though you are not a tree and we are not in a forest. But you are still in your home, I'm assuming. Is, and is gonna, they're going to ask, is this your home? 
or was the manor your home the villa your home and is going to wait to see if anything happens (laughs) (laughs) just out of curiosity does anyone have any like specific like reaction to hyacinth doing this to the orb it's adorable (laughs) yeah taking it Corey's just kind of watching she doesn't understand vera but it sounds pretty (laughs) i'm just going to assume hyacinth knows what they're doing <clears throat> oh. Oh. My and Hyacinth just looks at the orb, and then Vera again asks <laughs> something. What is she asking Vera? Well, what are they asking Vera? I'm messaging it to you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Secrets. Their ears just twitch, waiting for an answer. Or just waiting for any kind of, like, feeling that they might get from this. Meanwhile, just so everyone knows, only Hyacinth is hearing anything. Okay. Hyacinth looks at the orb, looks at Dell, looks at the orb, and then hands the orb back at Dell. Is I, everything I, okay? Th- this is yours. You, you, you keep this safe for us, okay? I trust you to keep this very safe. And, <laughs> and I looks confused, but a little fidgety. Oh no. Oh. Like trying to remember something. And one of their hands just goes into their hair and is feeling around for something, anything, but doesn't find anything. And they leave the room and go back to theirs. And they come and they- right back and they are just like fiddling with a one of their daggers, waiting just looking around at everyone. So what do we do next? What? Uh, I was going to say, did I miss something? (laughs) You all saw what you saw, didn't hear what you didn't hear, and just watched that result happen. Did the orb speak to you? The, the way that trees do. Are you okay? That's... That's a question. I don't it know is. you well enough to tell you the answer to that. <clears throat> but in this moment, I'm... <sighs> pondering? I think someone used that word. I'm pondering right now. When when I think about it more, I'll I'll let you know. That's fair. It's the orb of pondering. It just makes you ponder. Makes you ponder. <laughs> yeah, those who hold the orb uh, suffer a negative five for free thinking. They only ponder for one round. Ugh. No think, only ponder. What does everyone else do now that the orb is safely in Dell's hands in the room? Does anyone else want to take a stab at? But... Maybe hearing the orb talk to them? Uh, yeah, kind of. go- I want to touch it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's God. friend-shaped. It's talking to them. Oh, God, I was waiting for this. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Del will lean down, like, enough that, that Dear Bay can either, like, hold it or, or just, like, put a paw or paw or hand. I want to make sure I get the right word. It'd be more akin to a paw, I think. Okay. Put a paw on. 
She'll put a paw on it. <coughs> she would also like to lick it. I knew it. Just to be sure. I, um, I don't think anything will happen, but it may not taste good. DFA has a very you-don't-know-until-you-try attitude. That's very fair. <laughs> he's not gonna stop you. you, he's just letting you know, like, it probably won't taste good. No idea how long it was sitting there, either. If you She'll wanna say, lick it... Well, sometimes the longer you let cheese sit, the better it gets. Can't argue with that. The DM has no objections if the party is going to let DFA lick the orb. DFA is going to lick the orb. Yeah, no, it's I, I try not to interfere with DFA's process. <laughs> yeah, that same. Okay, um, DFA, how do you wish to lick the orb? Oh my god, that's the thing I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> lick the orb. That's a sentence I thought I'd ever hear. <laughs> She's going to do what looks like. like one nickel. You now have one nickel for that moment. <laughs> She's gonna do one of those like full licks too, like <laughs> oh, God. all down the side of it. Ooh. Del has no reaction. I am mm. twitching. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but that's good. <laughs> okay, I knew it was coming, but I wasn't prepared. Okay. Mm. So DFA. Blem. Yeah, you blem the the orb. Oh God. Um. Please draw this. Please. <laughs> At first, you taste the cold metal. And yes, I'm describing cold as a taste. Because some people know that's a thing. Oh, it is. Minty. It is. It, it is. 100% is. If you say it it's not, it does hurt your teeth. Um, you taste the cold metal and as... Oh my god, I feel so weird describing this. As your tongue drags along the metal, you taste... Um, I want to say the coppery nickel that you would taste if you licked a penny. Um, there's a tiny twinge of that taste you get if you accidentally lick fabric because it was in Dell's bag. I'm not saying it's pleasant or unpleasant, only because I don't know what DFA finds pleasant or unpleasant taste-wise. Um, also, you taste a slight... And I mean very slight residue of the food <laughs> that um, Hyacinth had stabbed and, and ate. Because when they touched it, it stayed on the metal. Dear God, why am I describing what metal tastes like? It's so disturbing. Because you are committed to the craft. I am, but dear God. Was this in the DM's handbook? Was no. The warning they gave you? <laughs> There's actually a random table that you roll to see like what residues. <laughs> yeah, each player decides oh to lick this item. <laughs> I need this. <laughs> but yeah, that's all you get. Um, <laughs> the last thing you taste, though, because you know there's always like that aftertaste, is um. God, again, I can't believe you make me do this. Um. Wow, what's the that's a bit like the most akin thing. Um, you know when you eat certain meat, it has that like, I don't want to say texture, but a lingering aftertaste. And you know it's the like the proteins and all that. That's what you're tasting. Mm. Again. I love meat. Again, <laughs> things I never thought I'd describe. It's a meatball. <laughs> this is a race to see who's gonna break who first, and I think I'm winning. <laughs> We're only in session four, and at the moment, you are winning. <laughs> I know who I'm rooting for. Do we need yeah. to keep track of all the things that DFA has licked? Oh, God. We need a lick counter? Um, Not yet. Oh, I'm, no. so kidding this. I'm so doing a lick counter. Also, lick counter. Uh, Adrian, I'm just saying, and Andre is talking about how Captain Jack licked the rock. And metal has a mm -hmm. fun taste. Andy welds, so... Okay, so yeah. They, it, would know. <laughs> they, they know exactly what I'm describing. It's Probably, a, it's yes. A, it's a brass orb that's been sitting in a house, untouched for who knows how long. 
and then touched by people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Metal and dust. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> At least someone knows what I'm describing. Anyway, now that DFA has licked the orb, anyone else planning on do something? <sighs> or is yeah. or is DFA not I done don't... touching? Yeah. She's not done touching. Okay. Oh god. I think I should ask that oh, too. Oh man. If putting one paw on it doesn't do anything for her, uh -huh. she'll put her paws under it to like kind of show like let me hold it. And then she's just gonna like wrap her arms around it. Oh. Hug the orb. Everyone hug the orb. Hug. All hail. This is how we start a cult. <laughs> All hail the glow orb. Alright, so you're gonna hug the orb? Yes. While you're doing this, what is everyone else doing, dear god? <laughs> While you just watch DFA just like blam just, this I, thing. Staring Again, that... Corey is not going to interfere in the process. <laughs> yeah, Elric's not going to interfere either. It's just going to stare in shock and disbelief that she just licked this entire orb. Hyacinth looks very concerned, <laughs> but is staring directly at the orb and switching. Like, their eyes are jumping from the orb to Del, the orb to Del, the orb to Del. I'm just trying to pay attention and, like, see if it's doing anything. Mogzio's just used to her process at this point. <clears throat> you have gotten a thing. <clears throat> she's going to, as she's hearing stuff, convey it to everybody because she has absolutely no filter. That's fair. And she goes, I hear people that I know. And dragons are important, but also be careful. And there's dragons. Why are there so many dragons? And she's kind of no. like looks down, and she just kind of like offers the orb back. Like there's a lot of dragons. Huh. Well, he, that's, that's ominous. That. Yeah, he doesn't know what to do with that, but he'll pick it back up. Hyacinth just looks directly at it and says, you didn't hear him? You didn't hear him telling you where to go. I'm supposed to go somewhere? He he said to go back. Mm. He, he sounded afraid and, and little and... DFA is going to go, no, I, I did not hear that. I don't think we talked to the same person. Maybe it's like a phone. Maybe... It just calls different people automatically. Are there phones in this universe? <laughs> um, Final Fantasy is crazy sometimes. Communicator. Tech. Communicator. Um, I, I, I'm ignoring 14 just for a minute, but I don't think any phones exist in previous Final Fantasies, do they? I don't. Seven. No, no. Se seven had cell phones. Seven had. So, seven had yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Seven phones had, exist. It, it depends to, on to a degree. What? Some form of communication does exist. Okay. All right, well, I guess hearing this, Elric's just going to go, all right, screw it, and he's going to go grab the orb. Pass I go the... after Elric. <laughs> Everyone's because passing the last. orb. All right, I'm going to grab the... this <laughs> orb that has the <laughs> DFA tongue all over yeah, it. Yeah, and Elric's going to grab it and kind of, like, bleh, and, like, wipe his hands a little bit first. <laughs> kind of wipe, wipe, wipe the orb a little bit and then just hold it and see if anything happens. <laughs> Um, just out of curiosity, Hyacinth, are you still, like, freaking out while this is happening because DFA heard something different? Yes. Like, it, it's, it's devolving mm. into panic. And it, it's bridging on almost protectiveness of this orb. And Hyacinth is going to look directly at Dell and said, that man can't have this. Oh, oh okay. He, he won't. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't hear what you did either, though. Um, I heard, uh, something relating to an 
a name I'd heard when I was um, newer, and then uh, something called a Shinryu, and then there was a roar sound, and then it was quiet. If you told me to go back, go back to the beginning. <clears throat> I right, uh, uh, spoke my language. Elric, in response to what he heard, is gonna like, drop the orb suddenly, kind of in shock, step back from it, and just kind of look around like I heard something different than you guys did. For the record, the orb clashed the ground safely, does not break. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, it is it is a thick orb. I was about okay. to say. <laughs> <laughs> Can Corey just kind of catch it, just in case? <laughs> um, roll a ref uh, reflex. Okay, let's see. How, how good are Corey's reflexes? Uh, what do I add to that? Uh, it's your the total reflex plus a, a, you know a normal roll. Um, where's the thing? It should be under your charisma and all that shit. It's with your fortitude and will. Oh, oh, okay. So that's an eighteen. You have to dive past everyone and reach out, and you barely catch it like three inches from the ground. Shit. And everyone kind of okay. just like gets pushed out of the way as you dive for it. Sorry about that. Eric, I'm gonna Eric. like cross my legs and sit on the <laughs> ground holding the orb. Eric's still kind of like looking kind of pale and just in, in shock of what he heard. And he's going to say, like, I didn't hear anything about dragons. But I did hear, do not trust him. DF Echoes, probably talking about Mogzio. Don't trust him. He's shifty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm only not me all dead. <laughs> Good catch. Are you okay? Are you asking Elric or Corey? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, good, good catch to Corey. And then, are you okay to Elric? Like, genuinely, like, oh no. Yeah, yeah. Just caught off guard a little. I think DFA is on the right track with the voices. They're familiar to me. Hmm. So it. It feels like it is at least a little bit something from from a past memory is used to help convey a message that it needs to give us. I would probably agree, yes. So do we tell the man who was going to pay us that, oh no, the orb was not there? So sad. Bye bye now. Or something. We just tell him that we don't take the job. We, we don't take the job. And he has to find someone else to try and find it. And as you're, comes uh, for it, we fight them. As you're all talking about this, uh, Corey's grip on the orb is getting very, very, very tight. And she's kind of shaking a lot. She's gritting her teeth and looks like she's about to lose her mind. But Hyacinth she doesn't want to put down. it down. Hyacinth drops down and then puts their hands around Corey, trying to like also touch the orb. But mostly trying to put their hands over Corey's hands. To try and like loosen the grip. but in like an over-the-shoulder kind of motion, like a hug, almost. Corey will, she'll, she'll open her eyes and she can't, she tries to talk, but she's kind of just stuttering and not making very much sense. And then she finally like lets you take the orb from her and just kind of puts her head down and her arms over her head. And all you hear her say is, I haven't heard him in so long. Dell's going to very gently take the orb back and put it back in his bag. 
just oh no just so i'm clear mogzio did you intend to not touch the orb today uh i'm allowing dill to take the orb back without me touching it yeah okay just making sure you weren't like oh i want to i want to be traumatized (laughs) (laughs) you want to share the trauma Moxie was looking at everybody else and going, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was trying to pay very sharp attention to, what, to what's happening to, um, to everyone. And what just I be- see... If you were observing, I would say roll... Um, just so you can keep track of what everything you saw. Uh, roll perception to like make, make sure you kept track of every experience that just occurred. Minus uh, the, uh, the, the lem. Nine, 19? You were obviously yeah, able to. You were able to obviously watch DFA because, yeah, <laughs> that you were used to. Um, you didn't understand what Hyacinth said to the orb or what the orb said back. You only noticed the reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, judging by the demeanor shift, you realize okay, that was probably an unexpected response from the orb. Cut to DFA, who reacted the way they did. Then cut to. Elric, you're like, okay, that's another not good response from the orb. Then cut to Corey, you're now going, okay, this is now very becoming a pattern. Before, it was a coincidence. You're not sure what they all heard, but you realize, okay, touching the orb is having bad results. <laughs> yeah, well, Moogle's faces aren't exactly the most expressive at the best of times, but no. he's just looking on with his like squinty face and just kind of expressionless. Just kind of watching. He may not express, but he watch. <laughs> well, now that everyone's had a collective trauma experience, what, what are you guys going to do? Did you all have something personal to talk to you? You could say that. I thought so. In a way, um, I, and he kind of looks around, he legit kind of feels like bad. He did not expect this as sort of an outcome because he, he's never had the, the kind of interpersonal stuff that like everyone else clearly has. So his was not not as like hard hitting and, and it's, Oh no. Um, my party. It's my party. broken. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. Is the bunny and Rogaden still on the floor or have they returned to a standing position? Or is still on the floor, <laughs> but still kind of slowly try to get up. She still her eyes look like they're a thousand miles away. Fair. Hyacinth will like hold Corey around the shoulders until she starts to stand and then the grip loosens. <clears throat> and, or- and Hyacinth just like distances themselves leans against the wall and just fiddles with the dagger again trying to think trying to think. Right, Elric's going to compose himself a little and ask if anyone is willing to share what they heard or saw. Or yeah, what they heard. He would be willing to share as well. Um, I, I can. I, um, uh, yeah. Sorry, I was going back to my notes to make sure I got it. Um, so, mine was was very small. Um, it, it wasn't very long. It it said, "Do not trust Ren." And then it said, uh, "Shinryu." I heard a roaring sound, and then it stopped. Um, Ren, I, I think, was supposed to refer to, um, to, 
uh, someone higher up in, in the the uh, corporate structure that that was part of my making, but um, it's I I never actually met him so. <laughs> And I don't know what Shinryu means. I guess I'll go. I heard the voices of my family from a day that was probably the worst of my life. At the end of it, I heard the voice of my mother say, do not trust him. I don't know who that could be. Perhaps it is maybe this Ren fellow or some something else tied to it. I, I don't I don't know. Just saying, if uh, because of time, Corey, if you wish to share, I would say you should go next. Just say, <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna yep. volunteer for that. Let me get back to where I was. Hold on one second, yep. okay, that's what I thought. Um, so Corey kind of nods and she crosses her arms really really tight and she just stares at the ground she doesn't look at anybody but she says i heard my brother's voice for the first time in 12 years saying i need you to find me yeah he was kidnapped when we were children from right with me. We, uh, our parents were dead. It was just me and him. And he's my twin brother. And he, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't like me. He wasn't, um, anyway, they took him and I couldn't stop it. And I haven't seen him since. I'm sorry. She's just going to nod her head, staring at the floor. DFA, you had mentioned dragons. She's going to look at you and go, I hardly think this is the time to talk about dragons now. <laughs> the one time GFA is like, whoa, mood. Me, bro, wrong Ray's time. I'm gonna snort laugh at that and loosen up just a little bit. Galric failing the vibe check. <laughs> the one time GFA passes the vibe check. He's not good with the vibe check. It's gonna go, well, I mean, yeah, like, you know, dragons are like, my thing and she's gonna like gesture at her armor she'd be like i heard dragons but i also heard people and then her eyes are just gonna squint even further and she's gonna go hmm i forgot most of it already and she's just gonna kind of shrug the orb has no power over the effect <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Simpson, what go, about you? Oh. oh, sorry. She's going to interrupt, and she's going to go, there's some we have to be careful of. We have to be 
on guard towards those, but that's just like that's common knowledge, right? And she just kind of looks around at everyone. Yeah, be on your toes around dragons. Makes sense. It does make sense. With that, does Hyacinth have any plans on sharing, or are they kind of, uh, sorry, check back later? Hyacinth is looking directly at Corey, hearing that she also has brotherly troubles of a missing sibling. Oh. And they just look at the pouch that Del put the orb back into. And like they they have just sunk in like this this usually very bubbly vera is just the stillest you have ever seen them and they just say i i heard i heard him i heard bright lily that, that at least that's what i call him i don't even know his name anymore I don't know what name they they gave him because they took him from me. Because he he was unfortunate enough to be a boy. And it, it isn't fair. The forest isn't fair. It's not the forest's fault. It's it's their fault. It's it's their fault for doing this to us. But I heard Bright Lily. My brother, my my little brother. He he said to go back to the beginning, but he sounded so young. He sounded so little. Like when we used to play together and hide and pick flowers and used to talk about finding. I'm not supposed to talk about. I'm not supposed to talk about him either. I I asked I I asked him if I'm supposed to go back to my beginning or theirs. I I thought I was talking to the orb and I was talking to I, I is it not Bright Lily? Is it is it not him? And he just yelled, go back. He he sounded scared. Bogsia will reach a hand out and uh, kind of just touch Hyacinth. The Hyacinth jumps away, like almost startled. <laughs> and looks like frightened at the touch. Because they have just been staring at this bag. Bogsia doesn't flinch, but he just keeps looking at her. That 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 man can't have that. I I don't know if it's supposed to just give you moments with them again, or if it's a warning. I the trees would give us warnings sometimes, but not much. They they would tell us if there was a storm coming, or they would tell us if something was broken in the way, like a branch that needed to fall, so that path couldn't be traveled soon. They they didn't say things like this. This is something. I I don't know. Corey's gonna supposed- step slightly closer to Hyacinth, but not touch them. Just kind of hold out a hand toward them, like you can. I'm not gonna touch you, but if you want. Me too, I will. And say, of course he's not getting the orb. We're hanging on to it. Yeah. 
Oh, can just have it. It, it stills now. <clears throat> like, we can just find, find a different job, right? Plenty of jobs, plenty of clients, plenty of people. Yeah. Yeah. Does everyone want to do a hug? She's going to look at Dell and, like, get a strange look on her face. And then she's just going to go to him and, like, <laughs> wrap her arms around him and kind of pick him up slightly and be like, yeah, thank you. Oh, she's going to walk up to Dell and do another little head pat, head rub. Just... You're, you're a good one. DFA you, goes for the leg. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Dell is going to, like, in some capacity, return all of the things and just sort of, like, take a second to be like, yeah, we're okay. It's it's going to be here, and we're going to figure it out, and it's okay. And that guy can uh, go away? I, yeah, he can go away. I don't know any of those idioms. He leaves in a week. We just have to hide it for a week. He doesn't know we have it. Just hide it for a week, and he'll be out of our hair. And everything else. Yeah. And everything else. I will put Dell down and <laughs> ruffle his hair a little, and um, look at Hyacinth and say, "I'm gonna go for a walk." Uh. I need to think, but I'll come back. Promise. Promise. Mm hmm And she's gonna walk out the door because I have to leave because I have to work in the morning. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really fair. If Hyacinth, it, yeah, I mean, uh, Hyacinth. Ori does take the opportunity to be like, I shall be back. Just going for a walk, don't worry. In which case, good night, everyone. This was sad, but <laughs> drama. Yeah. Drama. Drama. Hey, it's bye. called party Sorry. building. Yeah. Anyway, have good a lovely, night, y'all. Have a lovely evening. Good night. 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 All right. Bye. Waiting for Corey to leave. There we go. Um, as Corey leaves. There's a moment of quiet before um, Penny appears in the door, the now still open door that Corey walked out of. I don't want to be a bother, but um, there's someone downstairs for the lot of you, if you don't mind coming down real quick. What's he look like? Uh, it's actually not a he, it's um, the, the, it's the town council. And do it. <laughs> it. Did DFA actually say that out loud? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Penny has a startled look of. I didn't know you did do anything. Um. That's what I'm saying. I didn't. Okay. Okay. Does anyone know why the town council would want to talk to us? They were supposed to give us some place to live. For clearing out the bandits. Oh. I'm I'm gonna go put myself together. I can I'll, go I'll, deal with this. I'll be down in five minutes. Just just five minutes. Okay. Hyacinth leaves, goes to their room, and shuts the door. So Mogzio said they'll go downstairs. Um I'll go with Mogzio. Okay. EFA. Yep. Going with them. Dell? Yeah, gonna go on down. Okay. Um, making sure, like, to... I think he'll hide the bag, like, under the bed or something up here. Because um, he doesn't think it's a good idea to keep the orb, like, on him all the time. That's fair. Okay. But, okay. yeah. Uh, 
the four of you head downstairs first. Hyacinth obviously getting themselves put together. Um, as you come down the stairs, you see the door to the tavern closing. Obviously, Corey heading out for the walk. Um, standing in the middle of the tavern is three people. Uh, all three of them elderly. One is a Hume woman. One is a Mithra male. And the other is a... The, actual, the other one is Jonas. Which is funny seeing him out in the daylight versus the night shift of the tavern. Uh, the three look at you as you come down and go, um, we just watched your friend leave. Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, she just decided to go out for a little bit of exercise. Oh, all right. Um, yes. Um, we have come because the town has spoken about your deeds with the addition of testimony from the one Issa, who you brought back to town, it seems that you solved our problem in one way or another. Those of us here appreciate you, and we do not think that just letting you have a tavern room is the most adequate we can do, especially given how long they were a problem for us. So the town has decided, provided you wish it, if you don't, don't feel obligated, um... We are going to begin work to renovate the villa and offer it to your group. Great. Great. That, that that in a house. So wait, try yeah. that again with all three of you not at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> the, the council are just like, oh, we just heard three simultaneous voices. <laughs> what? No, that's canon. That's what happened. No, that's what I'm saying. The three of them look at you like, hmm. what? I mean, as long as the group is in agreement, I think that sounds like a great idea. Malizio, Dell, DFA? Yeah. Um, a house is nice. For the record, Dell, you have no idea that they're discussing the villa that the group broke into the night before. Yeah, yeah no, he has no um he's just oh a house is nice that's neat interesting uh, we just got became prisoners together and now we're going to be roommates the council that i mean yeah the minister that was speaking goes uh I, I want to remind you if you do not want this you do not have to feel obligated it was just a we felt you deserve something for what you've done for the town at, at, at large how long is that going to take though um, according to our our best people that we are having working on it, um, getting it back to a condition in which you can go in and live in it, working around the clock, uh, two weeks. We were an island that produced a lot of timber, so building homes is easy for us. Um, but. Uh, the actual renovations will take more time, obviously, to make it more what you would like. But to get it just to standard living arrangements in two weeks or so, if that's okay with you. Sounds fine. Uh, Jonas has also agreed that if you take this, you can stay in the tavern with no charge for the rooms, as you would have no other real option. At this, Jonas nods and in a very high pillow voice goes, uh, free to stay, free to stay. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Thank you. That's very generous. Yes, thank you. DFA is un uncharacteristically quiet. I'm concerned. Honestly, <laughs> I just kind of nods. DFA didn't even know any of this was happening, so she's just completely tuned out. It's becoming more and more apparent that her attention kind of comes and goes on the weirdest of things. The, um, the Mether also mentions that uh, the two people in charge of the renovations will be, they're already at the villa now. Their names are Biggs and Wedge. 
because <laughs> you gotta have them in Final Fantasy. Yep. Um, they will be in charge of the renovating, the upkeep, and like maintenance of the place. Um, if you have any questions while you're in town and you go visit them, you can talk to them. But for the most part, they are focused on getting the house in ship shape for you. Was there any other business that you came to discuss? Um, the two look to each other. Jonas just kind of shrugs. He's like, mm, "No, I, I'm just, I'm just here to t convey the thing." He he also reminds everyone that he's supposed to technically be asleep because his job is the night shift, not the day shift. <laughs> oh, oof, yeah. Um. But he says if he's not needed, he will personally be going, and he just felt he wanted to be part of the announcement. That way he could be there for any questions if need be. The other two go, um, no, th that was really it. Uh, did you have any other business with us? Uh, I suppose we're in the avenue for more work, I suppose. Um, oh, more work. Um, at the moment, I, hmm... At the moment, I can't quite think of anything, though, frankly, I didn't think you would actually consider taking the house. We, we were skeptical at best. Um, we can get back to you. We'll, go, we'll, we'll put a, um, a sign for the town to come to you if, you, if they need anything. Um, yes, uh, well, we're glad you took the offer. Um, welcome to Anchorhead's watch, and um, um, yeah. They nervously kind of like fidget their hands in front of them as they're like, oh, this went a lot better than they expected. OK, um, <laughs> there goes half of what we prepared for. Uh, um, oh, one more thing. Um, since you've been helpful and all, um, Biggs and Wedge also would be more than happy to help you with um, anything you wish to do outside of that, the villa. Um, when you see them later, they can inform you on what that is. But I just want to make sure you knew ahead of time so they didn't spring you with anything you weren't prepared for. Um, but yes, have, have a lovely day, and um, hopefully your friend is all right. Looks to the the Hume woman and says, uh, I think we should probably go. Uh, Jonas, you desperately need to go to bed. You've been up for almost 15 hours. And Jonas kind of like... Jonas kind of, Jonas kind of has that look of like someone who has not slept in a day. They're not in that, like, stoned look, but they're definitely, like, half-tuned in, half-tuned out. Yeah. <laughs> and they just start, I mean, like, smacking their lips, going, hmm, hmm, bad, mm-hmm. And just, like, high pillow walks out of the, the bar. Leaving the four of you in the tavern with the news that you have a home. Well, yeah. we'll have a home in two weeks. Yeah. Once this is done, Hyacinth appears. Yes, Hyacinth. A little bit more put together. Oh, we have a house. This is everything. And just goes back down and beelines to the group. Once you arrive, <laughs> Dell turns to you first and uh, reveals the news. <laughs> yeah, we have a house. Is that... We have a house? The people in the town said that they were very happy about what we did, and they're giving us a villa that needs some work done on it, so in two weeks, we'll have a house. Hyacinth looks at everyone. The, the villa. The villa that we were in. Yes, we That's robbed right. ourselves. Yes. So. Did you so guys view the house before they gave it to us? No, that, that's where the orb came from. Oh. So we, we tell him the orb is ours by rights. Because the house is ours by rights. Yeah. Circumstances change. Um. We barter, we tell him we want an ungodly amount of money. Something tells me we can't give him this orb. We can't, but we can't...
You all we seem pretty convinced. We, 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 we play the waiting game. That's, that's what you do when you want to run out of contract, right? You hide in one of the tea rooms and you wait until they leave your usual spot. And you just wait. So we stay out of his sight. We wait until he leaves. He finds us. We tell him they gave us the villa and everything in it is ours. We don't tell him anything. Do, do we need to go there? I believe they mentioned uh, Biggs and Wedge might have something to tell us near the villa. Oh. If we if we are wanting to avoid him and keep keep uh, Gale in the dark, maybe it's best that we meet Biggs and Wedge somewhere else other than the villa. Mm, that's a good point. Are, are those people or they're the foremen that are taking care of the renovations? Ah, I I was under the assumption those were things. <laughs> those were descriptions and not names. <laughs> Nope, every Final Fantasy just, game is, needs a Biggs and a Wedge. No, just is, one big wedge. Just a big wedge. <laughs> a big wedge. This thing is like fucking huge. A Biggs and a Wedge. <laughs> the biggest wedge. <laughs> okay, I think we're running the bit on that one. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else you guys want to do really quick? Uh, nothing I can think of. <laughs> Mogazi was just going to hop down and be like, oh, I guess I wouldn't win the vote to sell the orb anyway, and kind of waddle back upstairs. <laughs> DFA? DFA goes following after him. Okay. Um, because we cleared through all of that very well, actually. Um, this is actually where we're going to end it. Okay. Um, next week we will pick up there and discuss what happens regarding your Lovely new villa. Well, soon to be lovely. Um, thank you all for playing. Yeah. Also, thank, thank you all you. for enduring the trauma. Yeah. And for giving the trauma. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mogsio's yeah. like, I had a good day. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, you guys seem to have a bad day. Mogsio had a cinnamon roll. Mogsio got to, like, you know, have a good day. Everyone else yeah, had a I, I nervously riffle, riffled my cards while uh, people were losing their minds around me. All in all, good day for Mogsio. I'll take it. You take those. Uh, it's but... always a good day for DFA. Did you intend that to rhyme so well? No, it just worked out that way. <laughs> it worked out, yeah. Uh, anyway, but I, yes, um, we will pick this up next time. Um, for the audience, thank you guys for watching, and thank you for all the uh, lovely input we were getting about the blem of the orb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ande, I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate Ande so much for all of the lovely side commentary. It was delightful. <laughs> um, to, the orb. Do not lick the orb. But as always, for those who missed parts or just showed up at the very end, this will be up next Tuesday at noon, Eastern Standard Time, and um, I think that's it. That's going to be calling it for us. Alrighty. <laughs> the nad knockers roll out. <laughs> Oh, God. I think we need an official, official name. I'm not sure that <laughs> Monsio's down with Cone by the Dead Knockers. That'll oh, be discussed. That'll be discussed during the villa. Uh, probably. Dead Knockers HQ. Okay, it has a ring to it. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you everyone for joining. We will see you next time. Have a lovely rest of your week, and we will see you when we see you. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye.